As the day ended, my buddy and I, both teenagers, found a quiet spot in a camping area. We picked this place because it was calm and we were looking forward to a peaceful night under the stars. We set up our tent and were ready for a restful evening. But as the sun completely set, two big trailers arrived at our spot. A bunch of families came out, their laughter and talking breaking the quiet we had been enjoying. The grown-ups started to drink, and they got louder and more rowdy as the night went on. Even with all the noise, we tried to sleep, hoping they would quiet down after a while. After what seemed like forever, the grown-ups finally stopped making noise. But just as we were falling asleep, we heard someone coming towards our tent. All of a sudden, a beer can hit our tent, scaring us. Then, one of the men started walking around our tent, pretending to be a bear. My friend and I were scared. We didn't know these people, and their drunk behavior was starting to feel dangerous. But as the night went on, it became clear that they were just being silly, not mean. The next morning, we saw one of the men, still holding a beer, trying to play frisbee with the kids. It was a funny sight that made us feel better about the scary night before. In the years that followed, the camping area made a rule that teenagers couldn't camp alone. It was funny considering what happened to us. We behaved much better than the grown-ups that night. Looking back, that camping trip taught us to be brave and tough. We learned to stand up for ourselves, even when things got weird and uncomfortable. It was a night we would always remember, a story we would tell for years. It showed how strong we were and how we could find something funny in even the scariest situations. And most importantly, it reminded us that sometimes, the real monsters aren't hiding in the woods, but are right there in front of us. It was the 4th of July, a happy day. My family and I decided to go camping in the deep forest. The air smelled like pine trees and we could hear a river in the distance. We were with another family, our friends who also liked being outside. We spent the day laughing and having fun, the grown-ups telling stories around the fire while the kids played nearby. In the evening, our friends surprised us with a meal of oysters they had brought. My friend, who likes trying new foods, couldn't wait and ate a lot of them. Our tent was simple, but it had a special feature a small door for a dog. When it got dark, we went to sleep, with the sounds of the forest around us. But my friend wasn't ready to sleep. He stuck his head out of the small door, laughing. I didn't know why, but he just smiled at me. I didn't know what was about to happen. Suddenly, a terrible smell filled the tent. It was so strong it felt like it was a real thing. My eyes started to water, and I couldn't breathe because of the bad smell. It was like something really bad had happened inside our tent. I tried not to laugh, because the situation was so strange and the smell was so bad. I tried to get some fresh air, struggling with the tent zipper to get out. But the bad smell kept coming. It was like my friend had turned into a monster, letting out a never-ending stream of farts that filled the tent. In those moments, as I was trying to breathe in the smelly air, I felt like I was about to understand something really important about the world. But the only thing I realized was that our tent was now a dangerous place. As soon as I got out of the tent, I breathed in the fresh night air, which felt good after the bad smell. I looked back at the tent, which now reminded me of a battle we had lost. I knew then that we couldn't use the tent anymore. The next day, in the bright sunlight, I did what I had to do. I packed up the tent for the last time, even though it still smelled bad from the night before. When I threw it away, I felt relieved. The bad experience was over, but I would always remember that night, a reminder of the 4th of July camping trip that went horribly wrong. I used to enjoy the quietness of my grandparents' place, a big piece of land that seemed to go on forever. It was a place where the busy world felt far away, replaced by the pure beauty of nature. The place was tucked away in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by thick forests that seemed to tell stories of the past. My dad often talked about an old farmhouse that used to be nearby, a leftover from an old time. I wasn't sure if his stories were true, but they made my camping trips feel more exciting. One camping trip stands out in my memory. 
I had walked deep into the forest, away from the paths I knew. There, I found a spot that felt just right. It was a small open area, lit up by the soft light of the setting sun. I built a simple shelter out of branches, a small structure that fit right in with the rest of the forest. The night was quiet, the silence only broken by the sound of leaves rustling and the occasional hoot of an owl. When morning came, I found myself wrapped up in a light blanket, its thin material just see-through enough to let me watch the world outside. As I was slowly waking up, I noticed two figures standing outside my shelter. They looked like men, wearing big hats like the old-time settlers used to wear. I couldn't see their faces clearly, hidden by the early morning light. They stood there, quiet and still, looking at my shelter. I felt a bit scared. I quickly pulled down the blanket, expecting to see the mysterious figures. But there was no one. The open area was as empty as it had been the night before. The only sign of the men's presence was the feeling that they had been watching me. I was sure it was just a dream, a product of my imagination stirred by the loneliness and the stories of the old farmhouse. But the experience left me with a strange feeling that stayed with me long after I had packed up my camp and gone back to the comfort of my grandparents' house. The forest, once a place of quietness and peace, now felt a bit mysterious and unsettling. But even so, I kept going on my camping trips, attracted by the excitement of the unknown. Each trip was a new adventure, a chance to explore the mysteries that the forest held, always with the memory of the two men in the back of my mind. In the end, the experience taught me that the forest is full of stories, some real, some made up. And while we may never fully understand these stories, they are a part of the charm of nature, a reminder of the mysteries that lie beyond the well-trodden path. I've always enjoyed camping, and this time was no different. I was at a campground in Colorado, a place famous for its beautiful views of the mountains and clear water. The camping area was big, with room for lots of tents. It was surrounded by tall pine trees that made it feel private. The air was cool and fresh, smelling of pine and wet soil. As the sun started to go down, I put up my tent near a little stream. The sound of the water flowing was calming. I made a small fire and cooked some dinner, enjoying the quiet alone time. When it got dark, the forest came to life with the sounds of animals that come out at night. The hoot of an owl, the sound of leaves moving as a small animal ran by, the far-off howl of a coyote. It was all part of the camping experience, and I loved it. But then, something didn't feel right. The forest had become strangely quiet. The usual sounds were gone. I could only hear the popping of my fire and my own heartbeat. I felt a shiver down my back. I told myself it was just the cold mountain air, but I couldn't get rid of the feeling of worry. Suddenly, I heard a noise coming from the bushes nearby. I picked up my flashlight and pointed it towards the noise. My heart was beating fast as I saw two glowing eyes looking back at me. It was a mountain lion. I knew I had to stay calm. I made myself look bigger, lifting my arms and standing on my tiptoes. I spoke in a loud voice, trying to scare it away. After what seemed like forever, the mountain lion backed off and disappeared into the dark. I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. The rest of the night went by without any problems, but I couldn't get rid of the rush of adrenaline. As the sun came up, I packed up my stuff. I had made it through a night I would never forget. As I left the camping area, I felt proud. I had faced my fear and come out okay. The experience had taught me to respect nature and its creatures. It was a reminder that when we go into the wild, we are going into their home. And that's a lesson I'll remember on all my future camping trips. A few years back, I was in the middle of the Canadian forest. It was a long and tough trip to get there, with a two-hour ATV ride, then another 45 minutes by car. The closest town was far away, just a tiny dot in the distance, lost in the huge stretch of nature. My dad was with me, but we chose to sleep in different tents. My tent was small, just big enough for me and my backpack. As night came, 
The forest around us filled with the sounds of nighttime animals. The sound of crickets, the noise of leaves moving, and the far-off call of an owl were our bedtime song. Late in the night, a weird noise woke me up. It was a soft, constant sniffing, coming from right outside my tent. My heart was beating fast as I realized there were several animals, maybe five of them, walking around my tent. I was pretty sure they were coyotes, their noses checking out this strange thing in their home. I lay there, scared stiff, barely breathing. The thin material of my tent was the only thing between me and them. The sniffing kept going, getting louder and more wild. I could almost feel their warm breath coming through the tent, their shadows hanging over me. Then, just as quickly as it had started, the sniffing stopped. The quiet that followed was even scarier. I listened hard, trying to hear any noise, any clue of what they were doing. But there was nothing. Just the loud silence of the forest. Somehow, in the middle of my fear, I got so tired and fell back asleep. When I woke up the next morning, the sun was shining brightly, making long shadows on the grass covered in morning dew. I got out of my tent, my body stiff from the stress of the night before. I looked around, expecting to see footprints or some sign of the nighttime visitors. But there was nothing. No marks, no tracks, nothing unusual. It was as if the events of the night before had been a dream. But it felt too real, too clear to be just something I imagined. Even now, I don't know what really happened that night. Why did they sniff around for so long and then do nothing? Why were there no marks? The memory of that night still gives me the shivers. It's a reminder of the mysteries and the wild beauty of the forest, a sign that when we go into nature, we are entering the world of free and wild animals. After a long day of walking, I found myself in front of a big cave, with rain falling heavily around me. The sky was dark and the rain didn't stop, soaking me completely. I had to choose a cave to take cover in, and I picked the biggest one, hoping it would keep me dry. The cave was huge and the walls were wet. The wind was making strange sounds as it blew through the cracks in the rocks. It felt like the cave was alive, making noises because of the storm outside. The wind was so strong that it made the nearby waterfalls flow upwards. The water was flying into the air in a crazy way. It was scary but also amazing to see. I wasn't alone in the cave. Big mice were running around in the dark, their eyes shining in the weak light. Spiders were making their webs in the corners, not bothered by the storm outside. They were the only other living things in the cave with me. During the night, I could hear loud noises outside, like trees falling and rocks rolling down the hill. But I stayed where I was, wrapped in my sleeping bag, trying to stay warm. I had already gotten wet several times that night, and I didn't want to go out in the storm again. When morning came, I went outside and saw that the entrances to the other caves had been blocked by a landslide. I felt scared when I realized how close I had come to danger. If I had picked one of those caves, I could have been trapped, or even worse. Standing there, looking at the blocked entrances, I felt very thankful. I had made it through the night, survived the storm, and was still okay. It was a strong reminder of how powerful nature is, and how much respect it deserves. In the end, I packed up my stuff and continued on my way, leaving the cave and the memories of that stormy night behind. But I would always remember that night, the sounds of the wind in the waterfalls, the mice and spiders, and the sight of the blocked cave entrances in the morning. It was a night I would never forget, a night that showed me how strong and tough I can be when faced with the power of nature. I've always enjoyed camping, and living in Missouri gave me the perfect chance to enjoy the outdoors. One weekend I decided to go to a well-known camping spot in the Ozark Mountains. The camping spot was amazing. It was in the middle of the Ozark Mountains, with tall trees providing lots of shade. The camping area was big, with lots of space for tents and camper vans. It was a peaceful place that you could only find in nature. As the sun started to go down, I put up my tent and got ready for a quiet night under the stars. The sound of crickets and the leaves moving in the soft wind were the only noises around. 
When it got dark, I got into my sleeping bag, with the quiet of the night all around me. But then I heard something. A noise different from the soft sound of the leaves I was used to. It was louder, closer. My heart was beating fast as I slowly opened my tent, looking out into the dark. The light from my torch showed a big, dark shape going through my food. A bear. I held my breath, hoping it wouldn't see me. I remembered what I had read about what to do if you see a bear stay calm, don't move quickly, and never run away. The bear seemed more interested in my food than in me. After what felt like a very long time, it took a bag of crisps and walked off into the dark. I breathed out, not realizing I had been holding my breath. The rest of the night was quiet, but I couldn't sleep. When the sun came up, I packed up my things, thinking about how I had seen a bear. Even though it was scary, I felt proud of myself. I had faced one of my biggest fears and was okay. As I left the camping spot, I felt amazed by the beauty of nature and a new respect for the animals that live there. It was a camping trip I would always remember. It was a nice summer evening, and the sun was about to set, making long shadows on the ground. My dad and I were at a far-off camping spot, right next to a calm lake. The air smelled like pine trees and wet soil, showing how close we were to the thick forest near our camp. We had a habit of exploring this forest, attracted by a beautiful waterfall deep inside it. As we started our walk, the forest was full of nature sounds, like leaves moving and an owl hooting in the distance. We saw a pile of cut-up wood, which is usual in the woods, but something was strange. On top of the pile was a small kid's shoe, old and dusty. It was a weird sight, the simple shoe against the wild forest. We kept walking, forgetting about the shoe, until we came to a small open area. My dad went off to use the bathroom, and I looked away to give him privacy. That's when we heard it, a child's voice saying clearly, I'm over here. We both stopped. My dad looked at me, confused. He thought it was me, but then he realized it wasn't. We spent the next 30 minutes searching the area, shouting out, looking for any sign of a child. But we found nothing, no one. The forest was quiet, except for the sound of our breathing and our hearts beating. The waterfall didn't seem interesting anymore, and we decided to go back to camp. As we were going back, the forest seemed different, more scary. The quiet was broken by the sound of sticks breaking, bushes moving, as if something was following us. We walked faster, wanting to get back to the safety of our camp. We got back to camp, feeling relieved. We spent the night in our tent, the sounds of the forest reminding us of what happened. We left the next morning, promising never to camp there again. The memory of that walk, the child's voice, the feeling of being followed, still scares me. It was a strong reminder of how unpredictable and mysterious nature can be. But it also taught us respect, respect for the unknown, respect for the power and the mystery of nature. We haven't been camping there since, but the experience has stayed with us, a scary but important memory in our minds. It was a normal midnight, the kind where the moon was the only light, making everything look spooky. We were in a big park, a place where people like to walk during the day, but at this time, it was empty. The open space where we sat was made for picnics, with a few tables here and there. The nearby river reflected the moonlight, making a dreamy, almost magical scene. My boyfriend and I were sitting at one of the picnic tables, enjoying our alone time. The mood was exciting, full of the fun of being alone in such a big, open place. I was looking at the river, its calm flow making a relaxing background sound to our adventure. He was looking the other way, towards the thick, dark trees. As the night went on, we got lost in each other, forgetting about everything else. Suddenly, he tensed up, his eyes stuck on something behind me. In a quiet, serious voice, he said, There's a man coming towards us. I turned around and saw a person coming out of the trees. All I could see was a white t-shirt lit up by the moonlight moving towards us quickly. I got scared, and without thinking I ran, knowing he would follow. The man in the white shirt was very close, 
probably within 25 feet, when we started running. He didn't say anything, just kept walking quickly towards us. We didn't look back, didn't stop until we were far away from the open space. That night left a big mark on me. The fear, the rush, the feeling of being chased it was all too real. I promised myself I wouldn't go on midnight adventures in the forest after that. The memory of the man in the white shirt, quietly coming towards us, still gives me goosebumps. The experience taught me a good lesson about safety and the importance of being aware of what's around us. It was a clear reminder that while nature can be beautiful and peaceful, it can also be unpredictable and scary. From then on, I made sure to respect its rules and never underestimate its potential for danger. It was a scary encounter, but it also served as a wake-up call, a reminder to always be ready and alert, especially when going into the unknown. I used to jog when it was dark. The night was my comfort, and the quiet was my friend. The moonlight would make long, spooky shadows that moved with the rustling leaves, creating a soothing and exciting night scene. One special night, I chose to take a different path, one that took me through a thick, old forest. The trees were tall above me, their branches stretching out like bony hands against the night sky. The path was small and twisty, hardly seen under the thick tree cover. As I jogged, I could hear the sound of leaves crunching under my feet, the far-off hoot of an owl, the gentle sound of the wind. It was calm, but there was a feeling of worry, a basic fear that hid in the shadows. Suddenly, I felt something touch my face. It was soft, but sticky, like a thin curtain trying to stick to me. I realized I had jogged straight into a spiderweb. Fear rushed through me. I threw my hands towards my face, trying hard to wipe away the unseen threads. Then I felt it. Something big and heavy landed on the top of my head. It felt like a small animal, maybe a squirrel or a bird. I screamed my heart beating fast in my chest. I reached up, my hands shaking, and grabbed onto it. But it wasn't an animal. It was my own ponytail, falling forward because of my wild movements. Relief came over me, but it was quickly replaced by embarrassment. I laughed at my own silliness, my laughter echoing through the quiet forest. I continued my jog, my heart still beating fast from the rush. The forest no longer seemed calm, but rather full of hidden dangers hiding in the shadows. But I knew it was all in my mind, my imagination going crazy. When I finally came out of the forest, I felt a sense of achievement. I had faced my fear, no matter how silly it was, and came out stronger. The rest of my jog was normal, but the memory of that night stayed with me. From then on, every time I put on my running shoes, I would remember that night in the forest. It was a reminder that fear is often just in our minds, and sometimes, the things we're scared of are not as scary as they seem. And most importantly, it taught me to always tie my hair back when I go for a jog. We were camping near Lake Erie in Canada. It was a clear night, and we could hear the sound of water from the lake. We were five friends looking for a break from our busy city lives. The first day was fun, we went hiking and fishing. But the second night, things changed. My friend, Jake, got really sick. He had to go near the lake because he had a bad stomach. We were watching him from a distance. Suddenly, he just disappeared into the water. We thought he was joking, but when he didn't come up, we got scared. Just as we were about to jump in to find him, Jake came out of the water. He was screaming and ran towards us. He was far from where he had gone into the water, and he was shaking. Jake said that something had pulled him into the water. He said it was not an animal, but a strong force that was pulling him away from the shore. He managed to get free and swim back up, but we were all scared. For the rest of the trip, we were worried. We kept watching the lake, thinking something might come out, but nothing happened. The lake was as calm as it was when we arrived. On our last day, we packed up and left. As we were leaving, I looked at the lake one last time. It was beautiful, but it also had a mystery that we couldn't solve. Even now, 
We don't know what happened to Jake in Lake Erie. We've told our story, and some people think it might have been a strong water current or a muscle cramp. But we know what we saw, what Jake felt. It was real, and it was scary. That camping trip taught us to respect nature and the unknown. We came back home with a new understanding of the world, a world where not everything can be explained, and not every question has an answer. Back in the summer of 2011, my friend and I decided to go on a three-day camping trip to Beaver Lake, near Bolivar, Missouri. We had been planning this trip for a while, excited about the peace of nature and the fun of fishing. We got there early in the morning, just as the sun was starting to rise. The air was fresh, and the smell of pine trees was everywhere as we walked through the thick forest, looking for a good place to camp. After a few hours, we found a nice spot, surrounded by tall trees and with a great view of the calm lake. We set up our tent, took a quick nap to rest, and then went out to fish in the afternoon. As we walked by the lake, we saw something strange. The sandy shore was covered with lots of fish bones and dead turtles, their shells turned white by the sun. It was a creepy sight, but we didn't think much of it, thinking it was just part of nature or maybe because of some animal in the area. We threw our fishing lines into the water, hoping to catch some fish. But as time went by, we didn't catch anything. The lake, which usually has lots of fish, was strangely quiet. Feeling let down, we went back to our campsite as the sun started to go down. That night, we sat around the fire, the flames making long shadows on the ground. We had expected to hear the usual sounds of nature the hoot of an owl, the rustling of leaves as night animals moved around, the far-off howl of a coyote. But there was nothing. The forest was quiet, except for the occasional sound of an insect. It was the creepiest night I had ever spent in the woods. The next morning, we woke up to the same weird silence. There were no bird songs, no squirrels making noise, no signs of life. It was as if the lake had taken all the sounds. We looked at each other, feeling uneasy. We had only brought enough water for the first night, and the plan was to clean lake water for the rest of the trip. But seeing the dead fish and turtles, and the strange silence, we couldn't help but feel that something was wrong with the lake. We had to make a hard decision. We could stay and risk getting sick, or we could pack up and leave. After a short talk, we decided it was best to leave. We quickly packed our stuff, leaving behind the quiet forest and the dead lake. As we drove away, I couldn't help but look back at Beaver Lake. It was a beautiful place, but it had a mystery that we couldn't figure out. The experience was a strong reminder of how unpredictable and powerful nature can be. It was a camping trip we would never forget, a scary adventure that taught us to respect and be careful in the wilderness. The silence of Beaver Lake still rings in my ears, a spooky memory of the time when nature was silent. I once stayed in a cabin in Arkansas, right next to a calm river. The cabin was special, one side was all glass, giving a clear view of the river and the wild area around it. It looked pretty in the day, but when night came, the lack of curtains made me feel open and scared. The first night was something I can't forget. As it got dark, a loud, steady banging started. It felt like someone or something was hitting the walls, the roof, and even the floor. The sound was quick, moving from one side of the cabin to the other, making a scary noise of fear. The gas fireplace, which was supposed to give heat and comfort, became a source of fear. It would suddenly start up loudly, throwing long, moving shadows around the room, only to stop suddenly, making the cabin dark again. The TV, too, seemed to turn on by itself. It would turn on out of nowhere, showing nothing but static, adding to the noise of the banging and the crackling fireplace. Soft whispers filled the air, too soft to understand, but constant. They seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once, adding a scary background noise to the already scary atmosphere. After the first night, I was too scared to sleep with the lights off. We decided to leave the hall light on and keep the bedroom door shut and locked. But this didn't help much. Shadows started to show up under the door, 
moving and changing as if something was waiting just outside. I don't know if the cabin was badly built, or if someone was playing a mean joke on us, but the sight of those shadows was too much. We packed our stuff and left, promising never to come back. Despite the fear and the sleepless nights, that camping trip is still one of my most remembered experiences. It taught me about my own limits, about fear and bravery, and about how unpredictable nature can be. It was a strong reminder that when you're out in the wild, you're not alone. You're a guest in nature's home, and it's a place where anything can happen. Camping is really fun, and I would tell everyone to try it. Just remember to respect nature, and be ready for the unexpected. Because sometimes, the scariest stories are the ones that could actually happen. It was night time, and the only light we had was from our campfire. We were deep in the forest, far from any town. My husband, our two kids, and I were sitting around a picnic table, playing cards. The night was full of sounds and owl hooting in the distance, leaves rustling, and twigs snapping now and then. Out of nowhere, a small beetle fell from the tree above us, landing on the table. We brushed it off, laughing about it. But then, another beetle fell, and then another. They were all different some small and shiny, others bigger with odd patterns. They seemed to be falling from the trees, flying around us, crawling up the table. The beetles kept getting bigger and stranger. My daughters started to get scared. Their laughter turned into screams, their faces white with fear. They were almost crying, so we decided to go into our tent. I went in first, zipping up the entrance behind me. I turned around to comfort my daughters, but their screams got even louder. There's a beetle on your back, they yelled. I wasn't scared, but I told them to brush it off. They refused, moving away from me. When my husband entered the tent, I turned around and asked him to get it off. To my surprise, he screamed and moved away too. At that moment, I felt a chill. I could feel something crawling on me, something big and creepy. Without thinking, I took off my sweatshirt and threw it outside the tent. The girls were crying now, and my husband was silent. I felt angry. I didn't talk to my husband for the rest of the night. As the night went on, the sounds of the beetles outside got louder. But inside the tent, it was quiet. We lay there, wide awake, listening to the creepy sounds of the beetles. The night seemed to last forever, each minute longer than the last. Finally, the first light of dawn peeked through the tent. We came out, tired and shaken, to find our campsite covered in beetles. They were everywhere on the table, on the ground, even on my thrown-out sweatshirt. But as the sun rose higher, they began to scatter, disappearing back into the trees. We packed up our campsite in silence, each of us lost in our thoughts. The camping trip had turned scary, but we had made it through the night. As we drove away, I looked back at the trees, their leaves moving in the morning breeze. The forest was beautiful, but it was also wild and unpredictable. We had learned that the hard way. That camping trip was a clear reminder of how powerful and mysterious nature is. It was a night we would never forget, a story we would tell for years to come. But despite the fear and the chaos, there was a strange sense of achievement. We had faced our fears, stood our ground, and survived the night. And in the end, that's what life is all about, isn't it? I can still remember that day clearly, even though I was just seven years old. It was a bright, sunny day and we were at a campsite filled with the sounds of nature and people having fun. My brother and I were busy playing football, with the grass under our feet and the clear sky above us. I was feeling pretty good about myself that day, thinking I was a little football star. With all the energy I had, I kicked the ball as hard as I could. It flew through the air, but it went right past my brother and hit a nearby tent. A rough voice came from inside the tent. Touch my tent again and I'll kill you! The words hung in the air, casting a shadow over our fun game. My dad, who had been watching us play, heard the threat. He stood up his face serious, and replied, I'd like to see you try. The campsite went quiet, the tension was thick in the air. 
The tent's door was thrown open, and a man came stumbling out, his face filled with anger. In his hand he held a knife, its blade shining in the sunlight. It was almost as long as his arm, and the sight of it sent a shiver down my spine. But before I could even react, my dad was on his feet. He ran towards the man, his eyes fixed on the knife. Then, with a quick and accurate move, he punched the man right in the side of the head. The man fell to the ground, the knife slipping from his hand. The sound of his body hitting the ground echoed around the quiet campsite. But then, clapping started. People who had seen what happened came running over, patting my dad on the back, their faces filled with relief and respect. That day, my dad became my hero. He had stood up to a threat, kept us safe, and brought peace back to the campsite. The rest of our camping trip went by without any problems, but I never forgot that day. It was a strong reminder of the dangers that can be found even in the most peaceful places, and the bravery it takes to stand up to them. So, every time I find myself in a tough situation, I remember my dad's bravery. I remember that bright day at the campsite, the football game, the threat, and the man with the knife. And I remember how my dad faced it all with bravery and determination. That memory serves as a constant reminder that no matter how hard things get, I have the strength to overcome them, just like my dad did that day. We had a fun day setting up our camp in the White Mountains in California. The air was fresh, the sky was blue, and the trees around us were full of life. We had carefully put all our food in the bear box, a strong box made to keep our food safe from animals. But we were so tired that we forgot a loaf of bread in the truck. When night came, the forest was full of the sounds of night animals. The fire we had started was slowly going out, and the stars were bright above us. I was just falling asleep when I heard a noise coming from the truck. I slowly opened the tent, trying to be quiet. Looking out, I saw a big, dark shape moving around the truck. My heart was beating fast when I saw it was a black bear, its eyes shining in the moonlight. We looked at each other, and I could see it was interested. I quickly closed the tent, my heart still beating fast. There was only a thin piece of cloth between me and the bear. I could hear its loud breath, the sound filling the quiet night. It walked around our tent, its big body making a moving shadow. Each step it took was heavy, making the ground shake a little. I lay there, wide awake, listening to every sound the bear made. I didn't want to wake my girlfriend, not wanting to scare her or the bear. The minutes felt like hours as the bear kept walking around our tent, still interested. Finally, after what felt like forever, the sounds started to go away. The bear had decided to leave, leaving us alone in our tent. I let out a breath of relief, my body finally relaxing. But I couldn't sleep anymore. I spent the rest of the night wide awake, listening to the sounds of the forest, every noise making me nervous. When the first light of the sun came through the trees, I finally let myself relax. We had made it through a night with a black bear, a story we would tell for years. But one thing was for sure, the next time we went camping, we would make sure all our food was safely put away. When I was just six or seven, my dad decided to take me on the yearly camping trip with the boys. As the only girl in the family, I always felt left out. But that year, I was finally part of it. I was really excited as I helped pack our stuff into the old car. We got to the campsite as the sun was going down. The air smelled like pine trees and wet dirt. My dad and brothers put up the tents while I picked up wood for the fire. When night came, we sat around the fire, eating marshmallows and telling stories. Later that night, I needed to go to the bathroom. There was a small wooden outhouse not too far from our campsite. I remember the moon was really bright that night, making long shadows on the ground. When I went into the outhouse, the door made a loud noise, breaking the quiet of the night. All of a sudden, I heard a lot of noise outside. It sounded like growling, and then a dog barking really loudly. My heart was beating fast as I tried to understand what was happening. Then I heard my dad's voice from far away yelling, Nikki, 
Don't come out of there. His voice sounded scared, which made me even more afraid. I stayed inside the outhouse, shaking with fear. The growling and barking kept going, and it sounded like it was going around the outhouse. I could hear leaves rustling and branches breaking. It felt like forever before the noise finally stopped. When it was over, my dad came to get me. He looked scared, and his eyes were wide. He told me there had been a bear, and a dog from another campsite had been chasing it. They had been running around the outhouse. It hit me then that I had been really close to a wild bear. The thought was scary, but also kind of exciting. I was safe, and I had a story to tell that was better than any of my brothers. From that day on, the camping trip with the boys became a family tradition, and I was always part of it. And even though we had lots of other adventures, none were as exciting as the night I was stuck in an outhouse while a bear and a dog ran around it. I've always enjoyed being outside, so I decided to go on a trip by myself. I chose to stay at the Verde Valley RV campground in Arizona. It was a big 300-acre park in the desert, surrounded by beautiful red rocks to the north, Mingus Mountains to the west, and the Hackberry Mountains to the south. The campground was next to the lovely Alcantara vineyards, which made the rough landscape look a bit more fancy. The first day was really fun. I put up my tent, looked around the area, and even went for a hike. The campground was huge, with lots of paths leading to different parts of the park. The air was cool and clean, and it was really quiet except for the occasional sound of birds or leaves moving. When the sun started to go down, I went back to my cabin. It was a small, simple building, hidden among the trees. Inside, it was cozy and warm, with a small kitchen, a comfy bed, and a wood-burning stove. I spent the evening reading by the light of the fire, enjoying the peace and quiet away from the busy city life. The next few days were pretty much the same. I would spend the day exploring, and the evenings in my cabin. But on the fourth night, things got a bit weird. I woke up in the middle of the night because of a strange noise. It sounded like something was scratching at the door of the cabin. I sat up in bed, my heart beating fast. I listened carefully, but the noise had stopped. I told myself it was probably just a small animal and tried to go back to sleep. But the noise started again, this time louder. I got up and slowly walked towards the door. I could hear something moving outside, but I couldn't see anything through the small window. I decided to open the door, just a little bit, to see what was out there. As I slowly opened the door, a gust of wind blew in, making the fire and the stove flicker. I looked out into the darkness but I couldn't see anything. Suddenly, a shadow moved quickly across the open space in front of the cabin. I quickly shut the door and locked it. I spent the rest of the night wide awake, listening to the sounds of the night. By the time morning came, I was really tired but relieved. I packed up my stuff and decided to leave early. As I drove away from the campground, I couldn't help but feel a bit nervous. I couldn't explain what had happened that night, but I knew one thing for sure my solo camping trip had turned into a real-life scary cabin story. But despite the fear and uncertainty, I felt a weird sense of satisfaction. I had faced my fears and survived a night in the wilderness alone. And that was a story worth telling. I've always enjoyed being outside. So, when I got the chance to rent a small cabin in Colorado, a great place for camping, I was really excited. The cabin was right in the middle of the Rocky Mountain National Park, a place famous for its amazing views and lots of animals. The cabin was hidden in a thick forest, surrounded by tall pine trees. It was a small, old-fashioned building made of logs, with one room that was used as both a living room and a bedroom. There was a small kitchen area on one side, and a wood-burning stove that kept the place warm during the cold nights. The cabin was simple, but it had everything I needed. The first few days were calm. I spent my time exploring the area around the cabin, walking through the forest, and looking at the beautiful mountain views. The air was fresh and clean, and the only sounds were those of nature. But then, things started to get weird. One night, 
I was woken up by a strange noise outside the cabin. It sounded like something was moving around. I tried to ignore it, thinking it was just a wild animal, but the noise kept going, getting louder and more noticeable. I decided to check it out. I took my flashlight and went outside. The forest was really quiet. The only sound was the leaves crunching under my feet. I shone the flashlight around, but didn't see anything unusual. I was about to go back inside when I noticed something odd. The door to the cabin was slightly open. I was sure I had closed it before I went out. Feeling a bit scared, I quickly went back inside and locked the door. I didn't sleep well that night. The strange noises and the open door had made me feel nervous. The next morning, I decided to look around the cabin. That's when I saw them footprints. They were big and deep, not like any animal tracks I had seen before. They went all around the cabin, then disappeared into the forest. I was really scared. I was alone, in a remote cabin, with no way to call for help. I decided it was best to leave. I packed my stuff and left the cabin quickly, feeling like I was being watched the whole time. As I drove away, I looked back at the cabin one last time. It looked peaceful and quiet, hiding the fear and worry I had felt. I realized then, that as beautiful as nature is, it can also be mysterious and dangerous. It was a reminder that we are not always the safest, and that nature, as beautiful as it is, can also be scary. I never found out what made those noises and footprints. Maybe it was just a big animal, or maybe it was something else. But one thing was clear, my adventure in the cabin had turned into a scary experience that I would never forget. I always dreamt of seeing the wild side of Alaska, so I chose to stay in a cabin at the Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins. It was about 230 miles southwest of Anchorage. The campground was a paradise for nature fans, with amazing mountain views and beautiful sunsets. It was welcoming to large vehicles with over 100 drive through spots, tent areas, cabins, and brand new luxury camping tents. Each spot had well-cut trees and plants to give you the full Alaskan experience. The day I got there, the sun was going down, spreading a golden light over everything. The air was fresh and clean, filled with the smell of pine and soil. I could hear the far-off sound of a river running, a calming sound to my ears. I was by myself, but I felt calm and peaceful. The cabin was small but comfortable, with one room that was both a living room and a bedroom. There was a small kitchen area on one side, and a wood-burning stove that kept it warm. The walls were covered with wooden boards, giving the cabin a country feel. The first few days were quiet. I spent my time checking out the nearby wild areas, walking through the thick woods, and fishing in the river close by. The beauty of the Alaskan wild was stunning, and I felt a strong bond with nature. But things started to change one night. I was woken up by a weird noise outside my cabin. It sounded like something big was moving around. I got up and looked out the window, but I couldn't see anything in the dark. I decided to go outside and check it out. When I stepped outside, I felt a cold shiver down my back. The once familiar area now seemed strange and scary. I could hear the sound of leaves moving and twigs breaking, but I couldn't see anything. I decided to go back inside but as I turned around, I saw something that made my heart skip a beat. There were footprints in the snow leading up to my cabin. They were big and deep, not like any animal tracks I had seen before. I followed them with my eyes, and they led straight into the woods. I felt a wave of fear come over me. I quickly went back inside and locked the door. I didn't sleep that night. I kept the lights on and stayed awake, listening to every sound. The next morning, I decided to leave. I packed up my stuff and left the cabin, promising myself never to come back. Despite the fear and the sleepless night, I don't regret my decision to stay in that cabin. It was a reminder of the power and mystery of nature and the respect it deserves. The Alaskan wild is beautiful, but it is also wild and unpredictable. It was an experience I'll never forget.
I can still recall it as if it happened just yesterday. I was working at a camp in North Georgia, right in the middle of the Appalachian Trail. The town of Dallanega, where the trail starts, was very close. This place was also famous as a training spot for the Army Rangers, which made our camping trips even more thrilling. One summer, we planned to take the kids on a night walk. The weather was cool, the sky was clear, and the stars were shining brightly. It was the perfect night for cowboy camping sleeping under the sky on a tarp, without any tents. It was just us, the kids, and the beauty of nature. As night came, we sat around the campfire, telling stories and roasting marshmallows. The kids' laughter filled the air, their faces lit up by the fire. Slowly, they all fell asleep, soothed by the soft sounds of the forest. The next morning, I woke up to a sight that scared me. One of the counselors, a college girl, had a knife stuck in the ground next to her head. There was a note attached to the knife. It said, We could have killed you last night. Zoxo, the army rangers. I felt a chill as I read the note. The thought that we were not alone, that someone had been watching us, was scary. The idea of what could have happened if the army rangers were not friendly was too scary to think about. We quickly packed up and left the campsite, our minds full of fear and questions. Who were these army rangers? Why did they leave the note? Were they trying to scare us, or were they just reminding us of the dangers of the wilderness? In the following days, we took extra safety measures, making sure our campers were safe was our main concern. We never saw the army rangers again, but the memory of that morning stayed with us. It was a strong reminder of how unpredictable nature can be and the importance of being careful and prepared. This experience taught us a valuable lesson the wilderness is beautiful but can also be dangerous. It needs to be treated with respect and caution. And while we continued to enjoy our camping trips, we never forgot the note and the knife, a scary reminder of the hidden dangers that can be present. In the summer of 2011, my friend and I decided to go on a three-day camping trip to Beaver Lake, near Bolivar, Missouri. We spent the whole morning walking around, looking for the best place to set up our tent. After a quick nap, we were ready to go fishing. As we walked by the lake, we saw something strange. There were lots of fish bones and dead turtles on the shore. It was a scary sight. But we still decided to go ahead with our fishing. We waited for hours, but no fish bit. We were disappointed and decided to stop for the day. We went back to our campsite in the woods next to the lake. Usually, you would hear the sounds of animals at night and owl hooting, leaves rustling as animals moved around, the distant howl of a coyote. But that night, it was silent except for the occasional sound of an insect. The silence was creepy, and we didn't sleep well. The next morning, it was still quiet. There were no birds singing, no sounds of squirrels It was like the forest was empty. We realized that the lake, which should have been full of life, seemed to have killed all the animals. We had a hard decision to make. We only had enough water for the first night, and we didn't want to use the lake water. Feeling sad, we decided to pack up and leave early. As we drove away from Beaver Lake, the silence of the woods stayed in our minds. The trip was a strong reminder of how delicate nature is, and how important it is to respect it. It was a camping trip we would never forget, a scary adventure that taught us the importance of respecting nature. The memory of the quiet woods and the dead lake still stays with us, a creepy reminder of the silence that can fall on nature. It was a really dark night and the only light was from the last bits of the campfire. I was lying on a plastic sheet, and the cold ground under me felt really different from the warmth of my sleeping bag. The forest around me was super quiet, not like it usually is at night. All of a sudden, I heard a weird noise from the left. It sounded like bushes moving. My heart was beating really fast as I sat up, trying to see in the dark. The noise got louder and closer. I could see the bushes moving, something was definitely there. I was really scared, thinking about all the dangerous things that could be hiding in the dark. I decided not to check it out, 
Instead, I moved further into my sleeping bag, hoping whatever it was would just leave. Just when I was starting to feel a bit better, I felt my bag, which I was using as a pillow, start to move. At first it was slow, then it moved more quickly, until it was completely gone. The same noise was now right next to me. I started to panic. I was sure something was about to attack me. In a last-ditch effort to scare it away, I started making noises like a dog. I stood up, making loud noises into the dark, ready to face whatever was out there. Then, out of the dark, a small thing came out. It was a wombat, with my bag in its mouth. I felt so relieved when I realized I wasn't in danger. I was just dealing with a curious wombat. Looking back, it wasn't that scary, but for a 13-year-old me, alone in the woods, it was the most terrifying night of my life. It was a lesson learned, a reminder that not all noises at night are scary. Sometimes, they're just wombats looking for a snack. I always enjoyed going camping, especially at the Rocky Mountain High Campsite in Colorado. It was a big place, with lots of land, tall pine trees, and a clear lake nearby. The air was always clean and smelled like pine and wet soil. The campsite was well kept, with specific spots for tents and campfires, and a small wooden house for the park ranger. One summer, I decided to go camping alone at Rocky Mountain High. I got to the campsite late in the afternoon, when the sun was casting long shadows between the trees. I put up my tent near the lake, which sparkled in the dimming light. When night came, I started a campfire and cooked a simple dinner. The only sounds were the fire crackling and crickets chirping. As I got into my sleeping bag, I heard a strange noise. It was a low growl, coming from the direction of the forest. I thought it was a far-off thunderstorm and fell asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to the same growling sound, but this time it was much closer. I could hear leaves rustling and twigs snapping. My heart was beating fast as I slowly opened the tent, looking out into the dark. Suddenly, a big shadow came out of the woods. It was a bear, its fur shining in the moonlight. I held my breath, staying as still as I could. The bear sniffed the air, then slowly walked towards the lake, disappearing from sight. I breathed a sigh of relief, my heart still beating fast. I stayed awake for the rest of the night, listening to the sounds of the wild. As the sun came up, coloring the sky pink and orange, I packed up my campsite, feeling a new respect for nature. That camping trip was a strong reminder of the raw and wild beauty of nature. It was a frightening experience, but also a humbling one. It reminded me of the importance of respecting nature and the animals that live there. From then on, every time I visited Rocky Mountain High, I made sure to keep my food safe and my campsite clean, so I wouldn't attract any unwanted visitors. And that's the story of my scary camping experience at Rocky Mountain High. It was a night I'll always remember, a night that taught me what it really means to live in harmony with nature. We went on a three-day camping trip near Lake Erie in Canada. The first day was fun we set up our tents, gathered wood for the fire, and checked out the area. The peaceful lake was a nice view from our campsite. On the second day, my friend started feeling sick. He had a bad stomach, maybe from something he ate. When it got dark, he decided to wash up in the lake. We were watching him from a nearby hill, making jokes and laughing. Suddenly, he was gone. It looked like something pulled him under the water. We thought he was joking around, but when he didn't come up after a minute, we got scared. Then, he came out of the water, yelling really loud. He was far from where he went under. He ran out of the water, looking really scared. He kept saying that something grabbed his leg and pulled him under the water. We spent the rest of the night scared, sitting close together near the fire. Every noise, every ripple in the water made us jump. We were really scared. The next morning, we packed up and left as fast as we could. The beautiful lake that we liked so much before now seemed scary. I'll always remember how scared my friend looked when he ran out of the water. We still don't know what happened that night. My friend is sure that something in the lake tried to pull him under. 
We didn't see any animals in the lake, but we can't explain what happened. We know we won't be going back to that lake again. That camping trip was supposed to be fun, but it turned into a scary experience that we'll never forget. It reminded us that nature, while beautiful, can also be scary and unpredictable. I was on a camping trip at the Kirk Creek Campground in Los Padres National Forest, California. This is one of the top camping spots in America, where the sea meets the forest. The campsite was huge, with lots of trees providing both sun and shade. The Pacific Ocean was nearby, with its waves hitting the rocky beach. The air smelled like the sea and the forest. It was my third day there. I had spent the day hiking and looking around. As the sun went down, turning the sky orange and pink, I went into my tent, with the sounds of the forest helping me fall asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night. The forest was very quiet, without the usual sounds of crickets and owls. I felt a bit scared. Something didn't feel right. I opened my tent and went out, using my flashlight to see in the dark. I saw something moving near the forest. My heart was beating fast as I got closer. It was a deer, its eyes shining in the light from my flashlight. I breathed a sigh of relief. It was just a deer. Then I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, and my flashlight showed two glowing eyes. A mountain lion. I stood still, remembering what I had read about what to do if you see a mountain lion. I tried to make myself look bigger, waving my arms and speaking loudly. The mountain lion looked at me. Then it turned and went back into the forest. I took a deep breath, my heart still beating fast. I went back to my tent, feeling the rush of adrenaline slowly fade away. I was safe. I was alive. I stayed awake for the rest of the night, listening to the normal sounds of the forest. When the sun came up, I packed up my stuff, my heart still beating fast from the encounter with the mountain lion. I left the campsite with a new respect for nature and the animals that live there. The experience was scary, but it also reminded me of the beauty and power of nature. It was a camping trip I would never forget. It was a cool summer night in England. We were four friends, sitting close together in a tent in the middle of an empty field. The moon was our only light, making long, spooky shadows around us. We had spent the evening telling ghost stories, laughing and trying to scare each other. We didn't know the real scare was still to come. As the night got darker, we decided to go to sleep. We got into our sleeping bags, the air inside the tent was quiet. Just as I was falling asleep, a loud scream broke the silence. It was my friend, his face white with fear, pointing towards a corner of the tent. There, in the weak moonlight coming through the tent, was what looked like a floating head. It was looking directly at him, its mouth moving as if it was talking, but no sound was coming out. The sight was so strange, so unexpected, that it gave us goosebumps. We were scared stiff, our hearts beating fast. None of us dared to move or talk. We just sat there, staring at the silent ghost, until the first light of dawn started to come into the tent. As soon as the sun was up, we packed up our stuff and left. The field, which had seemed so nice the day before, now felt scary and dangerous. We didn't talk much on the way home, each lost in our own thoughts. That experience changed us. It was a clear reminder of how quickly things can go from fun and games to something much scarier. We never camped out again after that night, and we certainly never told ghost stories before bed again. The memory of that night still stays with us. Even now, years later, we can't help but look over our shoulders when we find ourselves alone in the dark. It was a lesson learned the hard way some things are better left unsaid, and some places are better left unvisited. I was living in Ohio and decided to take a break and go camping. I picked Mohican State Park, a popular camping place in Ohio. The park was a beautiful, quiet place, perfect for getting away from the busy city life. The camping spot was in the middle of the park, 
surrounded by tall trees and the soft sounds of nature. It was a big spot, with enough room for my tent and a small fire pit. The air was fresh and cool, smelling of pine and wet soil. One day, I decided to rent a cabin in the woods for a change. The cabin was old and simple, made of worn-out wood that fit right in with the forest around it. It was a basic cabin, with one room and a small porch that looked out over a calm lake. The first night in the cabin was peaceful. I fell asleep to the sound of crickets and the rustling of leaves in the wind. But the peace didn't last. On the second night, I was woken up by a weird noise. It sounded like something was scratching at the door. I tried to ignore it, thinking it was a raccoon or some other forest animal, but the scratching got louder and more desperate. I got up and carefully went to the door. The moonlight coming through the window made scary shadows on the wooden floor. I could feel my heart beating fast as I reached for the doorknob. I slowly opened the door, half expecting to see a wild animal on the other side. But there was nothing there. Just the quiet, dark forest. I closed the door and went back to bed, but I couldn't stop feeling nervous. The next morning, I found deep, rough scratches on the door. They were too big to have been made by any animal I knew of. Despite the scary experience, I decided to stay another night. I couldn't let fear ruin my camping trip. But the weird things didn't stop. Things inside the cabin moved by themselves. I would find my stuff in places I didn't remember leaving them. I heard whispers in the wind, words that I couldn't understand. On my last night, I decided to stay awake and face whatever was haunting the cabin. As the hours passed, it got really cold. I could see my breath in the cold air. Then I heard it again. The scratching at the door. This time, it was followed by a low growl. I gathered all my bravery and threw the door open. But once again, there was nothing there. Just the silent, moonlit forest. I stepped outside, looking around for any signs of what could have made the noise. That's when I saw it. A set of large, strange tracks leading away from the cabin and into the forest. I followed the tracks until they disappeared into the thick bushes. I never found out what made them. The next morning, I packed up my stuff and left the cabin. As I drove away, I couldn't help but feel relieved. I had survived my scary experience in the cabin. Despite the fear and uncertainty, I look back on that experience as an adventure. It was a reminder of the mysteries and wonders of nature, of the unknown that lies in the heart of the forest. And even though I may never know what was outside my cabin those nights, the memory of that camping trip will stay with me forever. I always wanted to see the wild side of Alaska. So, I decided to rent a cabin right in the middle of it. I picked Riley Creek Campground, one of the top camping spots in Alaska. It was close to the entrance of Denali National Park, a place famous for its amazing views and different types of animals. The camping spot was big, with many cabins spread out, each one private and quiet. The campground was a mix of thick woods and open fields, with the big Mount Denali in the background. The air was fresh and smelled like pine trees and wet soil. The cabin I rented was simple, made of logs and had a small front porch. Inside, it was comfortable with one room that had a bed, a small cooking area, and a wood-burning stove for heat. It was simple, but that's what made it nice. The first few days were calm. I spent my time walking around the campground, fishing in the nearby stream, and at night, I would sit by the fire outside my cabin, looking at the stars. But then, things started to feel weird. One evening, when I was coming back from a walk, I noticed my cabin door was a bit open. I was sure I had closed it. Inside, everything was as I had left it. I thought maybe the wind had opened it. The next day, I found my food all over the cooking area floor. This was odd because I had kept them in a locked box. I cleaned up, thinking maybe some animal had somehow gotten in. That night, when I was in bed, I heard a soft scratching sound from outside. It kept going and seemed to be moving around the cabin. I tried to tell myself it was just a small animal, but the sound was too loud, too close. I decided to check it out. 
I took my flashlight and went outside. The light cut through the dark, but there was nothing there. The scratching stopped. Everything was very quiet. I stood there for a bit, listening, but the only sound was the wind moving through the trees. Feeling a bit scared, I went back inside and locked the door. I didn't sleep much that night. The next morning, I found deep, strange marks around the outside of the cabin. That was enough for me. I packed up my stuff and left. As I was driving away, I looked in the rearview mirror. The cabin looked peaceful in the morning light, hiding the fear I had felt. I realized then that the wild is a beautiful place, but it's also wild, unpredictable, and not completely ours. I came back home with a new respect for nature and a story that I would remember forever. The trip didn't go as I had planned, but it was an adventure, after all. And that's what life is all about, isn't it? I've always loved going on adventures. So, when I had the opportunity to rent a cabin in Colorado, I jumped at it. The place was known as America's Best Campground, located right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains. It was a huge area with tall pine trees, a clear lake, and the beautiful Rockies all around. The air was clean and smelled like pine and flowers. The cabin I rented was simple but cozy, made of logs and located on a small hill with a view of the lake. It was quiet and peaceful, just what I needed. The first few days were calm. I spent my time walking around, fishing in the lake, and watching the amazing sunsets. One night, just as I was falling asleep, I heard some noise outside. I thought it was probably a deer or a raccoon, which are common in that area. But then, the noise got louder and seemed closer. I felt a bit scared. I took my flashlight and carefully went outside. The light from the flashlight showed nothing unusual. But just as I was about to go back inside, I noticed something strange. My cooler, which I had left closed, was now open, and everything inside was scattered around. But there were no animal footprints, no signs of a bear or a raccoon. For the next few days, weird things kept happening. My fishing equipment went missing, only to be found by the lake. My firewood was scattered around the campsite. Each event was strange, but there was no clear reason for it. On my last night, I decided to stay awake, hoping to see what was causing all this. Hours went by, and just as I was about to give up I saw it. A tall, thin figure was going through my stuff. When I pointed my flashlight at it, the figure turned. It was a man, looking rough and wild. We looked at each other, and he ran off into the woods. The next morning, I told the local authorities about what happened. They told me that he was probably a hermit living in the wilderness, not dangerous but not fond of people. They promised they would check it out. As I was packing up and getting ready to leave, I felt relieved. My adventure had turned into a real-life mystery, a story I would share for years to come. Despite the fear and uncertainty, I had made it through my solo trip in the cabin. I had faced the unknown and came out okay. And as I was leaving, I knew this was an experience I would always remember.